Inside Warner, uno muy emocionante para mí porque mi ciudad, la Ciudad de México, se vistió de gala para recibir al elenco de Duna Parte 2, una de las películas más importantes de esta década y por supuesto que tuvimos la oportunidad de conversar con el elenco para conocer más sobre esta emocionante historia. En esta ocasión mi amiga Valentina Pulgarín viajó desde Brasil para acompañarme a llevarles los mejores momentos de esta visita. Hola Latinoamérica. Hola. Bienvenidos a este Inside Warner Dune parte 2. Soy Gaby Cam y estamos listas. Uh -huh. I've never seen anything like this. This is crazy. It is crazy. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this Woo, here in Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> this is mad and amazing. I had been warned that Mexican fans were very enthusiastic. That's beyond my expectations. What is it about Dune that you got to, to do for the first time that it has nothing to do with anything you've done before? Lose weight. I lost weight in the desert. Honestly, I'm just in awe every day. Yeah. Come on, like I just want to be part of your gang everywhere you go. It's been one of the most enjoyable press tours because we just can't stop like flattering each other. Can you teach us really quickly a little bit of the Fremen walk, maybe? Oh, man. A Do you remember that? To the right, a little glide to the left. Right to a slow right. step, fast oh, step, and then glide to the right. Thank you, thank you so much. Para esa segunda parte se siguen sumando al cast talentos increíbles porque así como Timothy Chalamet y Zendaya regresan como Paul Atreides y Chani, también se suma Florence Pugh como la princesa Irulan y Austin Butler como el villano Fate Rauda Harkonnen, quien está dispuesto a terminar de una vez por todas con el linaje de los Atreides. I wanted to ask you both because I feel like these characters are sort of similar in the background, especially in the book. So how do you feel like that creates perfect balance to make the cinematic experience, which is, by the way, unlike anything I've ever seen before? I agree, but I think, I think it's the classic head-to-head. -head. A lot of my favorite films have that, you know, where... Uh, uh, I'm just gonna geek out for a second, but I've talked about it before, but in The Dark Knight, I love In The Dark Knight, or just throughout the, the history of Batman comics even, that, you know, uh, Batman and Joker can be more different in many ways, and yet they're the perfect opposites. I think Denise thread a perfect needle, you know, without it feeling cheesy or predictable, of two sort of figureheads going head to head. One with hair. <laughs> Amazing hair, by the way. Fader <laughs> Arthur, he's psychotic. He grew up in this brutality and Um, and that really, that, that creates the person that we see, what it would be like to have the Baron as, as your father figure and, um, and Raban as your brother, you know, I mean, it's, it's a really violent world that, that he grew up in. And uh, when you see the sun outside and you realize that it doesn't shine color on the world, uh, you think about what that does to you as well, you know? True spirit. Yeah. Tuvo un gran regreso fue Josh Brolin, quien da vida a Girlie Halleck y quien es también el mentor de Paul Atreides. Él vino a traerle mucha acción a esta segunda entrega y platicamos con él para conocer qué retos enfrentó para hacer a este personaje. There were times I was out there in the still suit with the big bubble around my head and it was 105 degrees and you can't drink anything because you have the big bubble on your head that is impossible to get off and so you, you and I'm going to talk about suffering, no, but, but we you, love you feel things. like you earn your stay. It's very hard to feel like you're having a bad day yeah. or something is tough, you know? I think even with learning the um, the fight choreography, we have such an incredible team, um, set team. I don't know, I don't know if I had like the most challenging day, but I did really enjoy the day of, uh, of doing my fight scene because we did it in a motion capture studio. Oh wow. Because my costume wasn't the most flexible. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, we, the, the shell, <laughs> the shell <laughs> yeah. that were in the scene yeah. and I'm just like, <laughs> and my my armor is the same size as 
Josh's armor and mm. Javier's yeah. armor. So I, I, I felt like I just looked like this like little girl in this like big over like sized thing. But then no. he said he was like, no, I promise you look cool. And I you was like, thanks. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Let me fight beside you. Y es que The Nivel Noob logra en Duna Parte 2 armonizar a un elenco maravilloso en un universo fantástico y una historia icónica. Así que no nos quedamos con las ganas de preguntarle cómo fue cumplir este sueño para él mismo y para todos los fans. It felt for me that you did a lot of those very interesting close-ups on the actors and also these very big shots, you know, of the desert and all that. Why were you doing those uh, contrasting shots with Greg Frazier? Why did you need that? The, uh, it all came from the idea that the book is very internal, the idea that in the book you have access to the thought process of the character, yeah. you have access to their uh, everything. It's a very paranoid book where every character uh, is trying to strategize how to survive and all, and uh, uh, all the characters are, are are, uh, are afraid to be betrayed by other characters and you have a but I didn't want to hear that thought process I wanted to feel it I wanted a lot to in the it. inside and of the, their yeah, heads exactly. right and I, and I always I always believe that one of the best most powerful weapon I have as a filmmaker is the actors. I mean, there were scenes that I didn't, you know, that I've read in the book that I didn't know how they were going to transpire into the movie. And a lot of times that because you have to truncate in a movie, a lot of times you just, that's why dialogue is so important, you know, and the specificity of, of dialogue. And yet what Denis does is he'll, he'll be super specific about what he writes. Yeah. And then we get on the set and then he says, this isn't working, do something else. He's able to see very large scope, um, kind of, uh, he's a large scope visionary, but he also cares equally, if not more, about the intimacy and the emotion of a story. Do you remember any details or spoilers from the book that you wanted for sure put in your performance in the movie? Ooh, that's a good question. One thing that I really appreciated, I mean, it's not like a specific factor, but just in terms of the writing, I loved how you don't meet her for such a long time, but you yes. only get her introductions. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was so mysterious and alluring and like, already she's fact heavy. Yeah. And I did kind of want that to translate, not just about her narrating, but like, she's someone that has so much information, but is still so mysterious, but is still trying to collect information. Yeah. And yet she's so calm and so um, quiet through it all. And so I really did want to kind of like bring that I Love think you of, got it. of thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, Thanks. Yes. yes, perfect, mysterious, <laughs> Done. Just perfect level, just really mysterious. And doing her little podcast in the movie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. She was doing Iconic. that. I know it. She's doing a podcast. She's gonna invite Chani on at some point. Yeah. <laughs> we'll sit down. Let's see. So, <laughs> Chani, tell me, how did you meet Paul? <laughs> Your blood comes from Dukes and great houses. We don't have that here. Here, we're equal. Men and women alike. What we do, we do for the benefit of all. Well, I'd very much like to be equal to you. Maybe I'll show you the way. I feel like Dune is ultimately a love story. Um, why do you think this is a story unlike anything we've seen before? Yeah, I think uh, uh, what Denis is masters at is, is, is being able to carve out a story that feels human when the scope feels massive and, and the world feels quite literally otherworldly. For us, I think it was, it was almost a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. to find because I think these characters are not just like high schoolers, <laughs> you know, living normal lives that get to like go on dates and whatever, you know, there's so much um, that they're in the midst of and so much, I think, uh, pain and weight on their shoulders. So I don't know, I, I think for us, it was just about earning and deserving that love story and, and making sure we tracked it no matter what kind of amazing action sequence is happening, there's always, this, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit of heartbreak happening too. <laughs> My allegiance is to you. Do you believe me? Is there something you're jealous of each other that you got to do on screen and the other one didn't? You know yeah. what? We've <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous of both of you. Come on. I, mean, I can say the 
the obvious things, which is like the costumes <laughs> and things like that, which would be lovely to wear these gorgeous things. Um, but um, what I loved about the way you interpreted Princess Irulan is that control. And I would mm. have loved to, I don't know, be in the room while it was mm. happening at least. Are you prepared? You've been preparing me my whole life. We've been partnered together for the last week talking about this. We're both so excited because both of us do the opposite things with our characters. Mm -hmm. Like, Chani is so fiery and so she's out in the elements. Like, this is her life. She's tough. She has an entire people to be defending and being protective of. And then Irulan is kind of not seeing any of this. She's, she's in a completely different uh, place. She uh, doesn't have to witness any of the hardships that Chani does. And I think, like, seeing what happens next, seeing both of us appreciating what the other, other actor has done um, has been a very exciting thing to talk about. May thy knife chip and shatter. May thy knife chip and shatter. You both have the chance the chance to, by the end of the movie, mm. near your battle scene, to share the room with almost everyone from yeah. the cast. What's that day of shooting like when you know that you're getting on set and almost the whole cast is going to be in the same room? Uh, it was one of the most incredible days on set I've yeah. ever had. Yeah, I, I, I admire every one of those actors so much. Mm -hmm. and, and we worked so hard for many months beforehand and then finally, we got to it's have true, that right? moment, it's true. you know, and and, uh, and then we present it to everyone. Yeah, and then you present <laughs> it. Well, yeah. it, it felt like opening night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of us trying to kill each other. <laughs> I am Paul Atreides, Duke of Arrakis. Our enemies are all around us. Together, we can bury them. No se pueden perder Duna Parte 2 este 29 en cines y les voy a dar una gran recomendación. Véanla en la pantalla más grande que encuentren y manténganse al pendiente de las redes de Warner Channel. Yo soy Gaby Cam y esto fue Inside Warner Duna Parte 2.